Well, greetings, viewers and voyeurs. Got that funk here. How you doing? Hanging in there with the uh, stay-at-home order, I hope. Uh, there's so many videos I want to make, uh, but I spend so much time watching uh, my window on the world, which is basically the Internet, uh, and just watching how people are coping with what's going on and everything, and it's really hard. And I could make a dozen different videos about different aspects of the... Um, situation that we're all finding ourselves in at the moment. Uh, however, before I do that, I want to cut real quick to a video that I made about eight years ago. This is an excerpt from that video, um, which came out in 2012, and it's called Reminding You of What You Already Know. If there's someone in your life that you care about, make damn sure they fucking know about it. If you haven't told your children that you love them yet today, do so. And if you don't have kids, say so to your parents. It's really easy to forget that very simple thing. But our entire civilization races along a razor's edge. And everything could come crashing down, pretty much in the blink of an eye. We don't know what tomorrow will bring. Except we do know that tomorrow, if it comes for us at all, will involve immense human suffering, if not for yourself, for other people. And it therefore behooves us to drink in and savor every moment of beauty and joy you possibly can, because these moments are never coming back. Okay, so now that we're back from that, I just wanted to say, um it has become more strikingly apparent to me than ever how true that was that our civilization it races on a razor's edge and we don't know where this is all going to end we don't know what's going to happen <clears throat> we don't know how long it will last we don't know whether someone we care about is going to perish <clears throat> Some people do know that because it's already happened to them. And I feel very, very sorry for anyone who's lost a loved one in this epidemic. Um, what I wanted to say for this video is a little bit dark, I suppose, <clears throat> but I can't help it where my thoughts go sometimes. About 10 years ago uh, on this channel, <clears throat> I did a video called um, What If Tomorrow? And the premise of that video, and uh, I'll, if I can find it, I'll link it in the description. The premise of that video was basically that what if something catastrophic happened, like say, for example, a solar flare, uh, which wiped out all the satellites uh, and um, messed with like the Earth's magnetic field a little bit, and basically all of our internet completely went down. You know, what if that happened tomorrow? How would that change your life? What you will. What would we do? How would we cope? What, 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 what would happen? Well, uh, I would like to pose the same question in a different light this time. Forget about the solar flare. You know, we're in a pandemic right now where um, the responsible thing to do is to be uh, locked down as much as possible, stay home as much as possible. Once you find out how infectious this uh, disease is, it's extremely contagious. And the fact that it's so contagious means that if we don't lock it down, uh, even if you get it and get symptoms, or no symptoms at all rather, <clears throat> you could be passing it on. And the thing is, uh, without any control measures, one infected person tends to infect three people. And so that's three times three times three times three. So for you infect three, they infect nine, they infect 27, and so it goes on. And in 10 steps, that's like 59,000 people. And if 1% of those people die, that's 590 people, which basically means that if you take yourself out, if you're infected, but you take yourself out and you don't infect anybody else, you've just saved hundreds of lives, literally hundreds of lives. So it's pretty damned important to stay locked down. And um, I understand that it's inconvenient and annoying and, you know, uh, 
etc etc and a lot of people can't afford it and what's going to happen to the economy and to people's lives and everything it's it's going to come crashing and there's no oh, there's no point fucking sugarcoating it people there's no point pretending that we're going to get back to a normal what we get back to is not going to resemble normal it's just not um so <clears throat> what if tomorrow okay I, I, actually before i pose the question i'll just elaborate the context of where my thinking's been over the past couple of days with this. Um, I, I was either yesterday or the day before in Hungary. I mean, Hungary had recently elected a, a, a pretty right-wing fascistic kind of uh, government. And a couple of days ago, the government in Hungary basically uh, ended democracy in that country by uh, declaring that because of the pandemic, they're going to be able to rule by decree and they've got all sorts of other... Uh, basically outrageous dictatorial powers. And they've used the pandemic as their cover for this. <clears throat> Meanwhile, in America, um, the Justice Department is trying to hide behind the, the haze of all the news that's going on, and they're petitioning Congress to give them permission to use the pandemic as an excuse for them to hold people indefinitely for whatever crimes uh, without charge. Uh, no. No, that's 100% contradictory to the Constitution and to natural rights. Uh, absolutely not. You know, uh, every American should be saying over my fucking dead body about that. No. Um, <clears throat> and hopefully Congress has the spine to uh, say no to that. So it's already clear there's so many there's so many right wing governments uh, moving in the world right now, all of which are handling these uh, this crisis in their own different ways. But I mean, you've got right wing dictators in like America, Brazil, UK, Russia. Um, I know there's more I'm forgetting India. Um, and uh, yeah, that's pretty bad um, because when one country starts implementing harsh measures, don't be surprised if you start seeing it elsewhere. <clears throat> and uh, we're all extremely vulnerable while we're locked down. Here in the UK, for example, we are um, instructed by mandate not to congregate in groups larger than 10 for any reason. And I think that's reasonable right now because we're in the uh, we're in the upscale of a, of a pandemic, which is uh, has to be arrested. And the only way to do that is to stay at home. It's responsible to stay at home. Uh, but I'm a freedom loving American person, and I uh, <clears throat> I understand why people would object to uh, uh, jumping jumping to orders when the government tells them to what to do. Just falling in line. I get it. I I, I understand it's not comfortable, uh, but it's a matter of life and death. And it could be your life or death. So I, I, I just don't understand why why we're questioning whether we should be doing this or not. I know in lots of places people aren't taking the lockdown seriously. And in some places in America, they're not locking down at all yet. And I'm just like, what the fuck? You know, the only way we're going to get through this is if we all go together in the same fucking, in the same effort to get through it. So meanwhile, while people are and disparagingly trying or not trying to get through it, um, the powers that be are jostling all over the place. You know, uh, Congress just uh, passed a, a bill which, you know, they give some meat to Americans, like 1200 bucks or whatever it is, like a one-off payment, which is, you know, not even rent for most people. Uh, but they give people 1200 bucks uh, one-off. And meanwhile, they give all these corporations like half a trillion dollars, like $500 billion uh, in a slush fund, which is very little accountability. And Donald Trump says he doesn't want any oversight over the fund. And I mean, you've got to be kidding. You can't trust any man or woman with half a trillion dollars and no oversight. No one. You can't trust. There's no person that can be trusted with that. You need fucking stages of checks and balances to make sure that the people asking for the money are going to use the money for the reason that they're saying they're supposed to get the money and not for other reasons. And you need to make sure that the people who are giving that money aren't giving that money because they're going to get favors back in return. And so it goes on. There's loads of fucking reasons why it has to have loads and loads of oversight. It's obscene that they're trying to get away with this fucking heist without any oversight. 
So there's loads of things that are happening. People are jostling for position and using this pandemic as their basic cover because everyone's worried about whether they're going to fucking live or die or not. So we're vulnerable right now because we're locked down. And I want to say, here's the question. Right now, in the current climate, <clears throat> where uh, here in the UK, public demonstrations are illegal, so you can't even, make, you can't even stage a public protest. Um, what if tomorrow they, the government or whoever, whatever, they, turned all these off, just off, off. They just turned them off and simultaneously blocked internet access to both Facebook and Twitter. I mean, there, there's other sites they could block access to, but just those two alone. They just blocked access to it. What if that happened tomorrow? And they decided to declare that because of the pandemic, it's too dangerous to hold public elections this year. What if they did that tomorrow? What would you do? What could you do? What would the right thing to do be, whether you could do it or not? Give it some thought. I look forward to the comment section. Oh, by the way, I need to apologize to everybody, both uh, for last week's video on this channel and also the video I did previous to that on the Breakfast Club channel. Um, I haven't been able to respond to comments very well um, on the videos because <clears throat> The keyboard on my laptop is fucked, and I went out and bought this keyboard about a month ago, and now it's fucked as well. Um, and basically, I can get like one or two sentences, and then it packs up. And I gotta plug it in and wait for it to fucking... Uh, it's a fucking mess. Anyway, so I apologize for not uh, replying in the comment section. I think what I'm gonna do uh, for both those videos is do a comments reply video. Uh, so you can look forward to that. Um, let me know what you thought about the premise of this video and anything else that I said in it. What if that stuff happened tomorrow? It's pretty dark, but we're in dark times. And if you think about it, any predator, like a lion, say, for example, when they're circling a herd, they look around, try to find the slowest, weakest, and then they pounce. And when we are basically at the mercy of experts right now, we, we, we need to be able to trust the people who are telling us what to do. We are extremely vulnerable to them just taking over and saying, you know what, fuck it, you can't do anything about it right now. What if that happened tomorrow? Looks like I picked the wrong week to quit sniffing blue.